there guys, this is Malorian, and this is finally another Malorian Spotlight. Uh, excuses aside, I'm sorry, and you know what, we're going to start trucking on these because i got a few that are, are waiting to go. So anyway, what these Malorian sp Spotlights are is that people send in videos, I'm going to be showing them off, and then I'm going to be covering what I think about their list, how they deployed, and how they played the game. And uh, from that, I mean, they'll get to take away those thoughts there. And then you guys get to see what other YouTubers are out there and what other great channels there are. So today, we're going to be looking at Bromance Wargaming. And this is a, a, a real great group of guys. I've actually, both people playing in this, uh, Dejekar and Yoshi, I've played against both of them before at Brawler Bash. And they're lots of fun. And I hope you'll like the battle report. It's going to be Dark Elves versus Skaven. It's a kind of janky list in there, but we're going to talk about that after. So let's watch the video. Hey guys, this is Jekar with another battle report for Bromance Wargaming. Today we've got a 2500 point game between Skaven and my Dark Elves. Alright guys, so I don't have any lists for this game, so you're good, so uh, bear with me a little bit. From right to left, I have 15 Sisters of Slaughter. They have a Musician and a Standard Bearer. They've got uh, the War Banner, and my General is in there too, my level 4. I've got the Bloodrack Shrine in there as well, and the purpose of that unit is it is, I believe it's 6 deep for Steadfast. It has a 4-up ward or Toughness 6, and then it... Um, denies you parry and rank bonus and it has the extra you know bonus for the war banner so it starts with the static of like five or six if it charges it's hard to kill and so it should theoretically be my steadfast breaker i've got a cold one chariot hiding behind that impassable terrain i'm glad that i'm not facing against wood elves with all of these forests uh two units of dark shards the one on the right which has more paint on it is has the banner of eternal flame the one on the left has like the standard of swiftness then we have heinrich the hydra hiding behind the uh, forest there in this picture we have a my black dragon that's not painted is proxying as another hydra i hadn't bought the second hydra yet um, then we have my charybdis ultra pp -pee, and then we have my bus and i think i lied in an earlier picture and said my level four was in the sisters that was definitely a lie this bus is my light council bus i have a level three a, uh, two level ones and a level two all of that stuff is in there there's also a master bsb and then it's 10 it's 14 dark riders and i don't think they have sh uh excuse me i don't think they have repeater crossbows they just have shields they're supposed to just be my bunker and be fast cav for all of my light council guys on horses and also my BSB and just kind of hang out next to my monsters. This is my opponent's army. You've seen it before if you've seen this channel. He from left from excuse me, from right to left he has a block of Skaven slaves. He's got a block of Storm Vermin with a, a rat excuse me, a warlord on a rat ogre bone breaker in there as well. Up front already having sneakily infiltrated I think that's the rule. Whatever the Night Runners have moved up, they have slings. And there's a warp fire cannon, or warp lightning cannon, excuse me, behind, hanging out in the back. This is further to his left, my right. So this is across from, like, the sister bus. Um, you can see he has another unit of slaves. He's got some plague monks with the level 4 and his BSB back there. He's got two big units of sensor bearers and another warp lightning cannon. And a rat dart back behind the slaves. I'm not really sure why. If the slaves panic or whatever, they're going to run through the rat dart. And in the front of those slaves, you can see a warlock engineer. Um, I forget what spells he has, but, I mean, he has a gray seer. He has a couple little chump level 1s or 2s. So he's got plenty of magic to screw with me. And I left him a space over here by the sisters. He could stick his gutter runners down. So that was real smart of me. But I must not have been very scared of them, I guess. So I win the turn to go first because I'm the best. And you can see I am actually hiding my bus from one of those warp lightning cannons. That's enjoyable. And, oh no, excuse me, I'm on the hill. Never mind. I thought I was hiding from a warp lightning cannon. But I was I was cheeky. You can see Ultra PP's moved around the left. My Hydras are going to go around here. And really my goal is to pick up the stuff on the right while just 
or excuse me, my left, pick up all this stuff on the left and kind of stall all this hard hitting stuff on the on his left, my right, you know, get kind of shoot or, you know, kind of chaff up the sensor bearers. And to that end, I'm willing to give up the 400 or odd points of the blood rack and the sisters just to, um, you know, keep everything else occupied. And then hopefully I can get back to his back lines with my monsters and then get the juicy, juicy rat points. All right. So this is just a picture of my right side. You can see I pushed the blood rack and the sister bus up. I'm attempting to just keep him focused. That's why I pushed up so far. Uh, you can see a silly thing that I did. I didn't put my chariot facing towards the right flank. And had I measured and known his gutter runners could have gone up or showed up there, I would have you know, been facing them, so I could have possibly made a charge or at least threatened them. But I was too silly for that. So here I am you know, just going to try and rectify my stupidity. And of course, a cannon can see, at least one cannon can see me. So that's a thing and cannons like to eat my chariots so hopefully that's okay he scrolls all my magic and so we go into his turn my shooting does a couple wounds here and there this, you can see his push up he doesn't push up too far on the left here he doesn't want to give my monsters easy charges remember the black dragon Nazgul model is actually a hydra and he does push the slaves up because he's not scared of my dark shards which I actually think is kind of foolish my dark shards the slaves will grind me out, but the dark shards actually generally win that combat. And there's two units, so I might even be able to flank, and that's just not going to go well for him if I actually get a flank, and then they're on like steadfast on leadership seven or five or whatever they are with the general. So I'm okay with that. This was pretty brutal over here. Uh, you can see his gutter runners moved up, and. I want to say the gutter runner shot at the sisters, but he may have actually magicked the sisters now that I think about it. I think that he just threw some dice at um, like warp lightning and I had to let it go and he just knocked five or six sisters off and that was frustrating. You can see that he didn't do anything to my chariot. His cannon, I think it was like strength two this turn, so it just you know pinged off of me and then the gutter runners didn't get anything done either thankfully so that's gonna go well for me next turn when I charge them and scoop some points this is my turn too you can see I charged they did a wound on the stand and shoot I blew them up with impact hits and just kind of you know didn't didn't take anything in combat he was sad he takes the snare nets on them and so He's used to, like my fast cav, that's initiative 5, and the gutter runners are initiative 5. So when he takes the snare nets, I'm minus 1 weapon skill, so I'm weapon skill 3. I think he's weapon skill 4 at that point, but I don't know. And I'm initiative 4, and he's initiative 5, so I actually hit him on 4s and don't get re-rolls. And he really likes the snare nets for that reason. But the problem is my charioteers are weapon skill 5 and initiative 6. So even after he reduces my initiative and weapon skill, I'm still hitting on 3s with the re-roll. And so he gets frustrated about that. But regardless, you know, I think I rolled like a 6 for impact hits. And that was just, it's all over. Yeah, so over here, I didn't try to charge. I like pushed up. I did like a wound with my shooting attack with the blood rack shrine. The reason I didn't charge or get any closer is, remember, my goal is not to charge them. My goal is to hold this whole flank up. And as you can see, I've got three big units looking at me. And so I'm okay with that. I I think I'm getting my points out, and I'm just trying to, trying to annoy them enough so that they don't see my monsters going to break the other flank. Here you can see what my left flank did on my turn two. Everything readjusted. I actually really love this about my monster mash lish excuse me, my monster mash list with the fast cav bus, I can just kind of redeploy everything where I want it. Now, one thing that my opponent pointed out after the fact was that this is actually really dangerous because if I fail a panic test, I'm only leadership nine, I do have a reroll, but if I fail a leadership nine with a reroll panic test, I actually, I'm just going to go off the board with all my points. And then my monsters are leadership six, and I think actually even the hydras are within six inches. So that would be really terrible. So he was like, hey, uh, you might want to watch that. And he's very right. I really will want to watch that. Some kind of magic gets off and just blows this unit up. Um, I think I have the Ring of Hotek, so it may actually have been a nice cannon shot. But regardless, something blows up like nine of my Dark Riders, and I'm very unhappy at this point because I don't even have Lookout Sir anymore and he has dose cannons. 
here's just a picture of what he looks like as he's moving up. You can see he's blown the crap out of those archers over there on the right with the flaming banner. I want to say that they actually got, um, not lightning cannoned, I want to say they got doom rocketed or something. It, it was terrible, but they somehow stuck. Uh, this is where, you know, he was like, hey, so if you failed that Leadership 9 test, that would be great. And that's when I realized that I had maybe not given myself the best option here. But luckily I stayed on the board. And so now the, the combat that I was feeling pretty confident about against the Slaves is not looking so great. Uh, Heinrich against the Slaves over there on the left-hand side is fine. Ultra PP against the Night Runners, not scared. Um... But really, my monsters need to be working in tandem, and right now I'm playing Keep Away, which is a terrible idea. I, I'm not really sure. I'm fine with redeploying to kind of you know, use my movement, but my movement's not that much better than Skaven. I really think I should have just committed last turn, and instead I, I ran away, but I'll, I'll try and touch on that later. This was an interesting move by my opponent. He put one unit of sensor bearers in front of the other and I guess he was thinking that he, I would charge him he would lose the first unit but do heavy casualties to me and then I would charge into the second unit and he would finish me off that's not a bad idea uh, actually when that combat happens I'll talk about why that was a bad idea but it made sense at the time I was thinking oh well that's not a big deal you know that's not stupid but it turns out to be not a very good idea all right so I don't have a picture of the actual charge but so I charge in to the it's my turn three, and I charge into the front unit of sensor bearers. I actually, again, remember my, my goal is not to fight these things, or it wasn't to fight these things, so I'm not sure why I charged in. I think I realized that he was just going to charge me, and I wasn't going to get my impact hits. So I went ahead and charged in, and that's when I realized, so he has five people in base with the shrine because of cornering off. They're only initiative three. So I kill like four people with the initiative with the initiative test, you know, the blood rack stare. He has to take the sensor test on every model in base con in, in his unit. And there's like 15. And he rolls, I want to say like three sixes. It's not terribly unaverage. And then I realize that I only have three models that have to take a test. I have two guy the two guys up front and the blood rack shrine. And the blood rack shrine only fails on a six. And the two people up front have a four up board save in combat. So I take zero wounds. I think I take a wound and then ward save it. And then I go before him and I don't get my bonus from the sisters. But, you know, between the impact hits and the the Medusa on top and the, the six attacks from the sisters and stuff, I think there's like one guy left and he attack and he has to attack the blood rack because he's a guy right in the middle. And so he does a wound to the blood rack shrine. And I overrun into the forest, and luckily the Bloodrack Shrine does not fail a test and explode, because that would have been a rather silly thing, and probably would have spelled the doom of my sisters. Uh, same story over here. I, If I didn't charge these slaves, he was going to charge my small unit and break through, and I just couldn't do it. So Heinrich charges the butt of this unit, and these, and these Dark Shards charge the front. And this is actually an okay combat. I'm pretty sure I, ha I didn't blow the breath weapon in this combat. But Heinrich has a bunch of attacks. And so he just really... He, he really is breaking this down. And he's staying out of that forest because I'm pretty sure that's a stupid forest. And he's out of leadership range. And I don't want him to become stupid after... Like, fight his way out of combat and then become stupid. So I keep, like, combat reforming him down to, to touch. But eventually he's going to end up having to touch them, I'm pretty sure. Here is what the rest of the board looks like. You can see that I moved up a little bit because I don't want to run off a board. My other Hydra is positioned such that he can um, take a charge if he has to. The reason those wizards are out is one of them has speed of light and the other one has uh, time warp. And I wanted to bubble speed and hit both of those monsters. And I wanted to be able to time warp Ultra PP the Charybdis. And I, tr I tried to time warp him first. And then I irresistibled um, speed bubble. So I took a wound with the wizard that has speed of light. And that was the end of my magic phase. But what that means is, realistically, any if he charges me with the, the uh, Storm Vermin, I'm going to kill the guy on the Bone Breaker regardless because I'm initiative 10 weapon skill 10 and he has the fell blade and he's taken a wound already so either of those monsters is going to beat that warlord down 
and he's as many points at least as a monster, and then the other monster will have a good charge as well, and I can, you know, into a flank, or he can just reform or whatever, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm not scared of the slaves, so it's really just going to be, if he charges a monster, I'm going to try and kill the warlord and hold, and then charge in with the other monster to support, or I'm going to charge in next turn and try to get these spells off again. So he's kind of in a damned if he does, damned if he doesn't kind of situation. So this is his turn. I break them and, or I break them and overrun and, you know, get out of the build and get out of the forest. And I think I actually run them down. And yeah, it's just bad. You can see I have like two guys left, two or three sisters left, and my blood rack shrines on a single wound. So I'm not going to be doing anything, but luckily nothing's facing me. So I just have to stop like warp lightning from exploding my brain, and I'll be able to save all these points. Here's kind of a blurry picture. He decided to charge in on his turn into the Hydra being proxied as my Nazgul. And just like I said, initiative 10, weapon skill 10. I have 8 attacks, strength 5. I direct all of my attacks at the guy with the fell blade. I kill him. I breathe fire on the unit. And then I thunder stomp. And I win by a boatload. And they're steadfast. So that's one thing. But I mean, I this, this unit is neutered. The Charybdis can see their flank. And it's just... That's it's all downhill. I mean, I don't think he did a single wound to me, and mm, no bueno for the Skaven. This is just an overview of the board at the end of uh, his turn. You can just see I've killed lots of stuff, and the plague monks just aren't even looking the right way to help. So you know he's down to a block of Skaven slaves, which are looking at my casters and like the block of plague monks that have his caster, his uh, gray seer and stuff, but I just got his general and yeah, it's, mm, it's bad. Bad news bears. So here's my turn. Ultra PP charges in. Just He takes a wound. Everybody goes ape. I don't even buff them, I don't think. Or if I do, he manages to stop them. It's really crazy and yeah, nothing... I, they run away, I don't catch them, but whatever. The slaves actually don't break, which I thought was very interesting. I assumed the slaves would break, but they made it on their leadership 5 or 6 or whatever it is. And that's fine, because everybody's out of their charge arc, or so I think. You can also see that in the movement phase, I pulled the blood rack shrine out of the sisters. And the sisters actually moved towards killing one of the cannons. And the blood rack moved over here just to get out of, you know, arcs of things and just to kind of like pick things off and charge stuff if she needs to. But with only one wound, she's just trying to save her life. You know, I take that back. Uh, she actually charged, I think, out of the unit and hit a warlock engineer that was out of the unit uh, to shoot something, to, to warp lightning or something. And that's why she's here, and that's all the further that she can spin after her reform and still be outside of an inch away from everything. I'm pretty sure she's out of line of sight. And then the other... Yeah. Like I said, the other two um, sisters go traipsing towards the cannon, which misfired and couldn't fire this turn, which was excellent. And I shouldn't point out, because I haven't mentioned it, the chariot has died to this cannon as well over there in the corner but it's okay. He got gutter runners and then took a cannonball. That's a, that's fine. That's apparently his lot in life. Somehow these slaves are still here. I don't really know. I'm just beating the crap out of them. You can see they've killed three over several rounds of combat. Heinrich, I think at this point, blows his breath weapon and just says, you know what, I'm not going to fight anything worthwhile anyway. Let's just kill some stuff. He's in the stupid forest, but whatever. He's next to the general. We'll be fine. Here's an overview. You can see at the bottom the bottom of the picture where my characters are. I actually picked up those other two characters who were hanging out. I wanted to get them back in the unit, so I did. You can see I've moved my archers up for some reason. I don't think there were any objectives or anything. I may have just been moving them as a cocky, you know, haha, I'm winning gesture. I guess maybe I'm thinking them plus the blood rack are going to take out some plague punks? I don't know. I'm, I, I really don't know what's happening. In his turn, Heinrich and these um, Dark Shards finish off the slaves. The explosion does a couple wounds to Heinrich, I think, and then he kills a couple more Dark Shards. Nobody cares. And I really can't believe I don't have a picture of this. He charged the big brick of slaves into this unit, 
and I'm really frustrated that I don't have a picture. And he did a couple wounds to my characters. You can see I have wound counters hanging all over the place. And then I beat him in combat because I have two standards, and I did more wounds than he did. And he was steadfast on a five or six or whatever they are, and he broke and exploded and did a crap ton of hits. And luckily, that may actually be where most of my wounds came from on my characters. But regardless, the unit is still alive, barely, and my characters are still alive, barely. I think he killed one or two wizards uh, that had already been wounded, but whatever, you know, that's... It wasn't really a fair trade if he killed even one wizard, but whatever, I'll accept it. Here's these guys. Uh, they can't really do anything. I think they turn to face the Bloodrack Shrine. Um, I'm not really sure. And his Grey Seer actually gets out of the unit. You can see him in the very back. Um, he's got kind of like curled horns, and there's an empty space in the front. He actually like gets out of the way um, to like cast a spell. Nothing can see him really. I don't really have that much shooting. It'd all be hard cover and long range and yada yada. So he feels pretty safe. He's just going to try and I think warp lightning or plague or something, trying to get some wounds off of stuff to get points. This is actually the last picture of the game because his gray seer explodes himself and the sisters are staring down the cannon, which couldn't shoot them. The gray seer is dead and the slaves are dead. So it's my turn. I want to say five next. And I'm just never going to get let the um, monks get into a meaningful combat unless it is all of my monsters in there, and they will just crumble. The cannon will be dead, and that is pretty much that. So it was a pretty crushing victory for the Dark Elves. Alright guys, well, that's the game, and as you can guess, there was some major points scored for the Dark Elves. He got, like, the Chariot, and that was it. And I got most of his points, courtesy of his Grace here exploding there on the last turn. So, yeah. Final thoughts. Skaven are squishy. And, I mean, I know that. I play against Skaven regularly. But, you know, the fact that I held up a slave bus like I thought I could with... 10, 12 Dark Shards? It's ridiculous. I mean, Heinrich helped for sure, but they killed one or two guys a turn? It was it was ridiculous. So, I mean, I know they're slaves. I know they're two points a model, but man, that was bad. Uh, I mean, his general has a three-up armor save on the Bonebreaker with the Fellblade. That was really just nothing. Like, I, yeah, against the Hydra, he had a five-up and just didn't roll very well or whatever, but Man, that's just not a good enough armor save. I don't. I want the Fellblade to work. I think that that's what Skaven need to beat things in combat. They need a guy with the Fellblade, but I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. On that point, I think that I got to be more aggressive with my monsters. I know this game turned out all right, but I had the one turn where I backed all my monsters up, and I felt like I should have just committed them to the Night Runners. I know the Night Runners would have run away and left me stranded, and that may be why I didn't do it. But I feel like this list works when I get monsters into things at the same time. Against Skaven, it's fine to get a monster in by itself. It can grind down a unit because Skaven are squishy, point one. But against other armies, I have to really alpha strike, and I did not play like I was going to alpha strike this game. And so that's frustrating. I think what I need to do is maybe squish my deployment up even more so that I don't really have a choice. Uh, Third, I have to not be stupid with my points. Like, when I put the fast cav bus on the, the board edge, yeah, there wasn't really anywhere else for them to go. But let's be honest, I was freaking, like, that was all of my points. You know, three wizards, BSB, 140, you know, not 140, but you know what I mean. A bunch of dark riders. That, that was just a couple f bad rolls from going off the board and, you know, just giving the game away. So I guess I got to think through that stuff a little bit better. Number four, it kind of leads into number five. Um, the sister bus did really well. I really was surprised at how well it did. I know I've busted um, other, like, steadfast blocks before with it because it has such good combat res and is difficult to wound and has so much static res, you know, and it generates a fair amount for that frontage. Uh, but it was really great against the Sensor Bears. The Sensor Bears may have been, like, its best matchup in that list, in that game. And so I definitely would charge them in against them, against Sensor Bears, anytime. 
I'll do it again. Uh, so I really like that unit. It's pretty versatile, but it is expensive. But it brings me to my my next point, which is that even the hipster, even the non-popular choices in the DE book are really, really powerful or really good. Like the sisters, people don't really rate them very much, and I think they do really well. And they did well in this scenario. Uh, the four boards were very, very helpful. Um, I'm sure against Wood Elves they would be less good because they have a six-up armor save, which is negated by everything in the Wood Elf book. But... I mean, Wood Elves have so much in this list already that they're shooting at. You know, shooting can't really be the answer to everything, and four board in combat is really nice when they're throwing, like, Wild Riders at you. Also, in our group, we rule that the Blood Rack Shrine, a unit joined by the Blood Rack Shrine can't be stomped because it's unique. It's a chariot plus infantry or a chariot plus, you know, essentially anything else in the book. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on what your group does. Not that it mattered in this game, but it could have. Um... I don't, in this list, I don't really miss Warlocks. Warlocks are really good. Um, they're worth 25 points, I think, even not being wizards, and then they're awesome wizards with, you know, set spells that are good and a really favorable miscast. But I don't really miss them, partially because I already have all the wizards covered, and partially because I'm not really sure what I would do with them. But what I do want, what I do need to get in here is some chaff, and so I'm really trying to figure out a way to put harpies in here because I could use more dark riders but I don't actually have the models so I but I can do harpies I have harpy models and I actually think harpies would be better for this list because they can fly so they can uh, you know jump over my stuff I can actually keep them behind back with my dark riders for a while I, I really like harpies I know that they're not as good as they were at when they used to be 55 points for a unit but I still think they have purpose in this book uh, mostly the purpose is they have 20 inch fly movement which is even a little bit better than dark riders and dark riders are more expensive so once my core is set which it is um, I feel like maybe harpies might be the answer and not that they would have helped in this game too much but I missed them anyway those are my thoughts that's the game I hope you enjoyed it if you like uh, if you liked it subscribe you know let us know what you liked what you didn't like and we'll see what we can do about it it's been bromance wargaming so there you go there's the video i hope you liked it and now like i said i'm going to do my part finally and i'm going to talk about what i think about the lists how it was deployed and how we played the game and this is this is going to be kind of weird because they actually are both uh, bromance wargaming uh, but since it's from the uh, perspective of the Dark Elf side, I'm going to be talking about the Dark Elves. Now, the very first part there, the list, is a little bit hard because he didn't actually give the full list. I got to watch and kind of see what there is, but for the most part, I can't get too in-depth there. Now, I know one of the things that's really the most jank is that whole one with the Sisters of Slaughter with that, you know, the, the blood rack, whatever thing with it there too. Now, it did really well in this game, but man, is that kind of a crazy choice. Um, like you were saying, he, he took it the way he did, so there'd be lots of ranks, taking away steadfast. But uh, just like actually Skaven on the other side, sometimes they do the same thing, where they'll take the, the furnace, or they'll take the bell, and then they'll just be Skaven, basically just skirting the outside, just to get lots of ranks, and then they'll get steadfast and blah, 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 blah. The problem is that if that unit is not big enough, very few losses mean that they lose those ranks really, really quick. I mean, we saw that where the uh, gutter runners come up and after a little bit of shooting or wherever that came from, he wasn't really sure whether that was magic or what, man, those ranks just disappear. So the idea of taking that for taking away steadfast Really risky, uh, especially in this meta now, where there's a lot more shooting to deal with these soft, squishy elves. I just don't think this is the right time to be doing a mix like this. Uh, Sisters of Slaughter are actually still good. Uh, one of the things you could use them here is just as a regular unit, not with that blood rack thing inside it. And what they do is they can go and really hold down those weaker units, say like the, the Slaves. Because they're going to take away all that combat res. They're not going to get any of their rank bonus. So really, I have a banner. You have a banner. It's going to come down to who charge and uh, kills. And I mean, the kills in the system of slaughter is going to be way higher. And so what you can really do that is push them up to really 
lock down a flank, right? Especially when you got multiple blocks coming at you, you're almost you're not charging into the slaves. You're going to move up and you're going to wheel so that that's going to bog down their entire line, and they're just going to get in there. They're going to get stuck in, and sure, you might not get your points back. But the disruption factor alone uh, it is massive. And he was talking about there, too, where he's looking for some chaff. You know, these guys, if you take them in just a block of 10, they can be really effective of doing that stuff. Where it's, it's almost like a chaff that doesn't just die in combat. They stay in there and they do their thing. So that, that's one part of the list uh, I would want to talk about. Um, having all the monsters, you know, that's a, a really good way to go. Um you don't normally see that as much in Dark Elves. I mean, it's definitely possible. You see it's here. But for some reason, a lot of people just don't go the Monster Mash way. Um, it is kind of a mixed list. And what he also has there, too, is that big bunker with the Light Council. Now, I was, I mean, I'll leave that part for later. But one of the things I was surprised from a list-building perspective is that going into it, I just assumed there were Warlocks. I was like, oh yeah, there's the Warlock bus. Yeah, I've seen this before. Oh, it's a Light Council. Okay, that's different. Um, but then when I saw that they're just Dark Riders, that they said at the end, he said there's no Warlocks. That is really dangerous. I mean, he was talking about the risk of failing a Leadership 9 re-rolled. Like, that is remote. I mean, I, I will take that risk all the time. The risk of just losing all those guys to regular shooting and then not having a lookout, sir, to lose these characters... It, it's just too dangerous. So I really think that is a, a weakness I'd try and find a way to correct for. Uh, of course, that's a lot more points. You could just take that blood rack and then change them to the warlocks. Uh, sure, their magic might not be there, but then they're stronger in combat. You have those magic if you want them. And the biggest thing is that your bunker has a 4 plus ward. That is huge. I mean, you're basically doubling the models, right? And they're not double the points. So it, it's just worth it to do it that way. So uh, the rest of it, as far as the list goes, I think it's, it's very interesting as far as the Light Council. Um, and again, without really a real full list of, of items and the rest of it, I, I can't really say too much more. Now, next point is deployment. And of course, you're up against scaving. You can't always get exactly what you want because they're going to do their rat darts. They're going to do this and that. And uh, it's hard to win those placements. Then again, um, they didn't really have that many rat darts and that many other throwaway units. And one of the big things I really saw here is that he purposely deployed to have his monsters uh, stay away from those sensor bearers. And wanting to go for the flank that has all the blocks and also had the fell blade. And to me, that was a complete mismatch. I mean, as of the way it turned out, his janky Sisters of Slaughter uh, unit was able to beat those sensor bears and get all those points, and that's awesome, but the monsters would do that even better, right? They get in there. They don't really care about taking their toughness test. They're going to be slaughtering them like crazy. Maybe the great weapons will get some wounds in there, but really they're not that big of a threat, especially after all the attacks you get in and how many guys they're going to lose. And you're just going to clean up those points like nothing. Meanwhile, if they're on the other side, they don't want to be stuck in slave blocks. They're not going to blow through them like nothing, right? You're going to see some steadfast. And then meanwhile... While you're stuck in those slaves, they're just hitting those monsters more and more with those warp lightning cannons. You want to get in and past so that maybe you can be charging those cannons on your second go as opposed to being stuck in there grinding for five rounds of combat or whatever. Plus that fell blade. I mean, it all worked out where he got the spell off and the fell blade guy was just killed. But normally with that high initiative, he's just going to kill that monster piece of cake all by himself. So that was really, really risky, and it all worked out, but ugh, I, I, I question it, and I think maybe that could have been swapped a little bit. Like I said, you get all the blocks on one side, the Sisters of Slaughter just kind of go to bog it down, and meanwhile on the other side, they're just going to blitz right through <laughs> the the sensor bearers, the monks. I mean, I don't know the list. I'm assuming the monks have the reroll to hit and wound banner, but when, you're, when they're wounding on sixes, they just don't do well. So they're going to blitz through all three of those units and uh, bad times for the Skaven. So that part there, uh, that deployment, that's really the biggest thing I can say there. Now as far as the game was played, um, 
Of course, there was a little bit of mistake. I guess this is still deployment with letting the uh, <laughs> gutter runners deploy in the corner. A little bit of a mistake there. Um, but then again, they could have easily just gone on their right, own side of the board. I mean, those things are very dangerous. And really, they could have deployed on their, their own part of the board and then just ran to the side of that uh, Sisters of Slaughter unit anyway and done the same damage, right? Just throwing their stuff. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that they didn't go, if they have poison, to be going after the monsters and try and kill the monsters off that way. But probably the, the Skaven player was thinking the cannons was going to get the work done. But talking about the cannons, I was also surprised how long the cannons lived. Uh, really, if you're running a light council and you're having all these spells to shoot out, I'm assuming, uh, he didn't talk about his magic all the time, other than the first turn it got scrolled and all that stuff, but otherwise, those cannons have to go down. I mean, all the time, what's my best magic missile to take that thing down? Six dice. This has to happen. These cannons have to die, because I'm running a monster mass with a chariot, and also this blood rack thing, and I just don't want cannons out there. I mean, sure, I might get lucky, and he might get strength too, but those have to die. So... Really, I think that's my, my biggest stuff with, with all of it. Uh, I think, too, the bunker could have been more mobile. Uh, with an army like this, where there's no uh, hell pit abominations and there is no doom wheels, that bunker could have been going around and doing whatever it needed, right? Uh, there's no reason why that bunker couldn't have gone around and also just charged the cannons themselves, right? If you don't want to shoot them down with magic, just charge them. That's what these things can do. Especially if there are warlocks and not just the, the Dark Riders, but even the Dark Riders with these characters, they can deal with those war machines. They can run around the whole blocks and they can charge that bunker and destroy them and kill the, the Gracier. So I think I mean, it's tough. When you have this bunker that's worth so many points, you don't want to be that aggressive with it. But as well, you have to realize that this is a very, very potent tool. And even if you're just going after little easy things like cannons, go for them. Get those points. Use your mobility. So that's really it there. Uh, really great channel. You guys should go and check it out. I'm going to have the link down below. But uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. Go subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.